Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Ulan Gaming. I'm joined by uh, General Spades. What up? And uh, it's been a long time since I've done one of these replays, and it's sad because I can't even post this immediately because of our tournament that's going on. Uh, but we have a... You are seeing this uh, at least two days post yeah post post recording. this happening um but uh, i have designed a new strategy with spain uh a strategy that i have not really played before this that um i i played this a couple times in casual games but it was it was against people who weren't that good so they, they weren't great tests but uh we did an in-house game uh in our discord uh, with some of our other friends uh, who I, we knew were pretty good and i decided to stress test this new strategy and oh god its results were far greater than i anticipated uh so we're looking forward to showing that to you today uh, it uh, broaches the realm of cheesiness in a very real manner yes uh so we are against pistol P we are against platypus slayer playing mexico uh, he is uh, pretty. He is pretty well known. Uh, he's about at me and Chase's skill level in our Discord. Uh, and then Pistol Pete playing uh, what is that? Uh, Dutch. Dutch. Yes, Dutch. Uh, which is honestly a bit of a surprising pick for him because uh, he's very infamous for loving his cavalry civs. He likes H two cavalry with Dutch, Germany Dutch and is France. A cav -civ. They, they can do cavalry, but they're not as known for it as much as like Germany and France is. You, you mean Skirmisher Reuter is not like the most popular Dutch strat Yes, but, strat speci ever? but specifically Pistol Pete is known for his heavy cav age 2 rating. That's what he it's likes. True. True. That's what I'm talking about. Anyways, carrying on. Uh, yeah, so uh, the baseline of our strategy is uh, it is a turtle boom strat where we are going to Fast Fortress uh, with Town Militia, and we're going to get Haciendas and Marvelous Year uh, in order to cap out our... In, in order to cap out our two Haciendas to 20 settlers each, and then immediately switch them to Soldado production and take advantage of all of the upgrades Spain has that Mexico doesn't to make our Soldados extremely powerful. Uh, that's, that's the baseline of the strategy. Uh, and you'll, you guys, will, we'll, we'll talk more about uh, exactly what we're doing uh, as we go through. It, it starts off with a 15 vil age up, uh, aging with the naturalist for two vils and two cows. Uh, you want to talk about what you were doing, Jace? Uh, yeah, sure. I, I mean, it's a strat of my own invention that requires um, a lot of work. It's not exactly pristine yet, and I think it's probably only really viable in team games uh, because the the mass is not very critical and the rush hits late, but it's a halberdier rush. Yeah, I, I remember you where... mentioning specifically in this game, too, that something went wrong in the early game and you were going to be later than normal or something to that degree. Right? Uh, yeah, I think I went idle um, and I forgot to chop wood for a torp until later uh just and my macro was off too so i didn't didn't get the halbs out in a proper amount of time but like the thought process behind this strat is well spain has the pure shiki fast fortress which is uh sending church card halbs and falconets and so i'm like well we can get church card halbs with sweden too so with leather cannons age two you should be able to do a pure shiki sweden type thing um oh and i ran out of food that's part of the problem like i had i had no hunts near my base it, it just wasn't an ideal start for you in general i i, I think no we it actually we thought we were going to lose working but we at this point i think we both thought we were going to lose this matchup probably uh but the hal brush is, is supposed to hit and they're veteran fox that you get in age two so they're they're pretty good um but yeah it this strat is really probably only viable in a team game and it needs some work, but that's where we are. Yeah, exactly. Th this game was a, uh, a th this game was practice for our tournament game that's coming up for uh, those who don't know, our Discord is running a, a 2v2 tournament right now. Uh, no prize money, it's just, 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 uh, it's just bragging for rights. fun. Just bragging rights and for fun. Yeah, exactly. Although uh, the, the fun has been a little... Um, 
shall we say, one-sided in the first round with uh, people doing five-minute trade monopoly strats and um, Platypus yeah, here getting a little <laughs> tilted. <laughs> yeah, well, Plat wasn't uh, victim Kale, of a five-minute. No, um, he wasn't. No, Kale was. Yeah, uh, people decided to bust out the cheese in a tournament that means nothing. And it, like, literally doesn't matter. But, okay. You know, it so, is what it is. People want to win. I get it. I want to win, too. So, uh, during transition, I set five villagers to coin. Uh, this is so that I can afford uh, my age up, as well as having coin left over to buy Minutemen, uh, if need be. Uh, we ship 700 coin as soon as we get there. We're only training two settlers. We're collecting from the cows that we aged up with immediately. And we're going to age up very, very quickly to the third age. Uh, so that, that's where we're at right now. So we went three villagers, 700 coin, and then I go town militia. Uh, however, if it, that I went town militia specifically because Platt and Pistol have rush, have both like team rushed me and Chase several times before in the past. And so I was expecting more early pressure. But if you are not expecting early pressure, feel free to go with like seven Rodoleros or eight pikemen or whatever you feel like you need. Uh, the, the town militia is not set in stone. Yeah, I, I am kind of surprised that they didn't rush. They like to rush me because I'm not exactly the best at uh, defending it. And Sweden is a very slow sieve and is one of my mains. So, I, you know, if you don't take off, or if you get rushed early as Sweden, you don't really get the chance to take off. So I was fully expecting that again, but it never happened, thankfully. Uh, Mexico, over on the other side, he's shipped, obviously, his standard a a age one start, and he's shipping 700 coin immediately followed by 700 wood. It looks like he's also following a fast fortress strategy. Uh, I do believe I've already started age- yeah, I'm like halfway through my age already. It's 6 minutes and 19 seconds into the game. Uh, yeah, his 700 coin has just arrived. He'll probably be starting his age up very, very soon. Um, In a minute. As Dutch for, is doing Dutch things. He, he's just doing Dutch things. He's sent 700 wood. He's building. He's, he's shipping his bank. He's just chilling. He's doing Dutch things. And I am about to be slowly marching across the map with 16 uh, veteran halberdiers. Oh, is that what this is? Oh, wow. You really were on point with calling that, the, the calling <laughs> that timing. <laughs> Literally, as he <laughs> said it. <laughs> the, the Hussar are on the way as backup, and uh, I'm waiting a little bit here. It's an, it's a bit unfortunate that the, the map is so big, I think. Yeah. And uh, that's part of the problem with team games. Like, normally you could send... You can either send the, the, the Halberdiers... Or, sorry, not the Halberdiers. The, the Hussars or the Leather Cannons. I went with the Halbs just because I knew I'd probably be facing Skirms. And yeah. the Halbs are a little bit more versatile. But my Hussar are almost in, so off I go to try and get a bank or two. Yeah. Uh, I also aged up with the Scout, so I got four Hussars from my age up uh, that are trying to go up and search for some villagers and some raids to not very much success. But, you know, it was better than nothing. Uh, and as you can see, the first card I sent in age three was the two Haciendas. I think I forgot about them for a couple seconds after they arrived because I was try focusing on hunting down this villager before I uh, before I placed them. Yeah, they're just chilling here. Uh, that is such a good card. It is such a good like, card, as you guys will see. You, it's you so nuts. To, you need to send it with, like, it, it really takes two cards to pay off. Mm -hmm. two or three for the haciendas to pay off but god damn it so yeah we got one villager and then we never got it did anything else that these was are <laughs> of note uh so now that uh, once uh, during my transition from two to three i did forget to mention this i set three to coin and five to food so i can continue to get villager production and also have the coin i need for the the minutemen that i mentioned earlier uh, and I set everybody else to wood, and I'm building outposts along my base. Now, if I feel like I'm being pressured, uh, at this point, my next shipment after the two Hacienda would probably be advanced frontier defenses. Uh, but I wasn't really pressured, so I just kind of continued to build Haciendas rather than ship them. And I ended up building, like, uh, outposts, not Haciendas, outposts, like, all the way through both of our bases, essentially. I capped out to seven. 
Uh, the two haciendas are built. They're immediately switched to settlers, mm-hmm. and I, I, I'm continuing to train uh, villagers from my settlers from my town center to wood. But as I hit ten villagers on wood or so, I move those uh, some of those villagers uh, over to the haciendas, and I have the haciendas garrison at themselves, uh, with the ultimate objective of trying to use marvelous year here which produces settlers faster and makes them work harder, to cap 20 settlers at the Haciendas as fast as possible. Uh, for reference, with Marvelous Year, if you have 20 villagers on a Hacienda, they produce one villager every 11 seconds. This is very good. Now, you missed it because you were explaining your build order, but I went in and I grabbed, I think, one villager, maybe two, and I destroyed a Dutch bank. Oh shit! I he had four. Yeah, there was one right here, right? The time. Yep, one right there here. was one right there, and I got in in time to get one down. And the other one is almost dead. It looks like about halfway, maybe. Uh, yeah, about halfway. Exactly, yeah. almost exactly halfway by about yeah. two hundred HP. Man, you are on it today. <laughs> <laughs> so I did pull back because the I was getting assaulted a little bit, but the leather cannons are in. And I'm going to go poke around a little bit more, see what I can find. Uh, at this point, to help Chase, I uh, am shipping two Falconets and bringing them up with his army. Uh, the, so I don't really have any military to speak of. My my whole defense is outposts, uh, you know, but I am able... One Falconet would be better. But I, I, I do send I that one out uh, as well. Yeah, I, I probably should have sent that. But uh, it is nice that through the use of the two Falconet and the team one Falconet, I am able to uh, to help out in a push regardless of me like not necessarily being uh, a, a, on a, a, with a huge military presence on the map. It's one of the things I like about this strategy is I can still help out in a push even while I'm booming a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if you send the the team one Falk shipment, uh, since you don't have a military, like I get to control the Falcon net and probably micro it a little better while you're doing eco stuff. Now, keep in mind, do keep in mind that I was not pushed at any point during my uh, attempt of this strategy. Uh, but normally, if you are pushed, uh, it really is just a matter of capping out your outposts and shipping advanced frontier defenses, uh, which will help you immensely in your defensive struggles. Uh, that's how uh, the Mexico Fast Industrial functioned, for example, uh, back when Mexico first came out. So uh, um, we have two fel- strat. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so we have the two falconets coming in now uh my falconets ends up lagging behind because i remembered that he had navajo riflemen uh, that because i was watching chase's bush and i was scared they would be in stealth so i had to wait for my explorer to catch up to the two falconets but it ended up being a non-issue uh, both of our enemies are just kind of sitting and uh turtling the platypus is going up to h3 wow he went to h3 a lot later than i thought he did um, uh, he was probably just making units. Probably. He's got 10 Soldado. And uh, we're going to see as we go through this game that uh, Spanish Soldados are better than Mexico Soldados by quite a, by quite the margin. Stupid. <laughs> so stupid. But uh, we have Skirmishers and Seminole Short Tooth Bowmen. Uh, we, we just have infantry on all sides. We're kind of just relying on the cannons to slowly pick off while we uh, do as much damage as we can throughout this fight. I think, meanwhile, in the middle of this uh, this transaction, I have a emergency uh, and run out of food or something, but I have to go manage my eco. And, uh, yeah, you see Halberdier's running into skirmishers that are kiting them and me doing nothing about it because I'm not looking at this right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, really, my falconets are just kind of walking around, t- picking off a unit or two. Uh, we do recognize that we do need to go, though, so uh, it's it's time to leave, and we we, we back out our units. Uh, at did this you lose point, the Falks, or did you keep no, them? No, I act I kept them, and then actually healed them. Uh, he is, as you can see, I'm sending advanced church, so I built a church up right around here, and uh, used some of my missionaries to heal my two falconets back to full health. Smart. Uh, but yeah. our haciendas uh, are about 14 settlers each right now. Uh, I'm about to sh- send a whole bunch more of these wood settlers over to the haciendas uh, in a hot second. But yeah, here's our church going up. Uh, we do manage to 
get away with the two Falconettes. One of them got very close, down to 25 HP. But at the moment, we are, we do recognize that our military is in a losing battle here. Although, yeah, and well, so I'm I have realized uh, uh, probably about a couple of minutes ago that the Hussar, that the halberdier mass is not going to win the game anymore. So so I start producing Corollians as fast as I possibly can. Now, I did send the Advanced Church card here. This is uh, because one of the upgrades at the Advanced Church gives a 25% HP... I know, housed right now. Uh, gives a 25% HP boost to heavy infantry at the cost of 15% of their movement speed. Uh, which, with Soldados having 300 base HP, is like... It, it, it gives them a huge amount of HP. Uh, in addition to the fact... Oh my god, this is ugly. Uh, in addition to the fact that um, the Hacienda Soldados that Spain gets have a 10% bump to their stats, uh, just as a base. Oh, wow! Okay, so I did get a couple more villagers than I thought here. I got two villagers! Yeah! Oh, mate, am I gonna get a third? I actually get three. I remember, I, I don't act, I, all I remember of these Hussar is I placed them here. No, I only oh, got two. Oh, you didn't get another one. I placed them here, and then I forgot about them until they died. <laughs> to to and this, yeah. <laughs> this, this is what happened. I was like, oh, right, I forgot to do things with my, with my, um, with my dudes. Uh, but now we're at 19 and 19. Uh... I think they're, we're supposed to be at 20. I'm not sure why I'm not at 20. But now I'm switching to Soldado production. Uh, they're making one every 13.08 seconds. With uh, 20, uh, they come out every 12.5 seconds. Now look at these guys. These guys are veteran Soldados with a 10% bump. So they have 390 base HP. Uh, and I, I'm just starting to spit them out right now. Uh, we're at about the 15 minute mark. Now, the enemies are also moving. They have a substantial military, a large mass of skirmishers here, a large mass of veteran soldados here. Uh, these guys are just base soldados with veteran stats. Uh, and we have Reuters as well. Very, very, uh, com very uh, dangerous unit compositions from the enemies. Uh, his explorer spots your whole uh, thing right here. I so guess they did a thing this game to try and nerf me by like building houses and units around coin mines. Oh, is that why they was... were doing that? To, just to prevent you, is to prevent you from building these? I didn't put that together. Yeah, ah. yeah. So, I mean, I only ran across one coin mine that had houses around it, and I destroyed it fairly quickly. Um, but but yeah, no, that is one of the things that you can do. That's what I do as Japan, is I build shrines around coin mines to try and nerf uh, Sweden players. That's actually really cool. Sweden has really a tough cool. time with Japan anyways, but... I never uh, knew about that. That's I, I, I would have never thought about that. That's really smart. But yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we saw that they were uh, starting to siege down all of these twerps up here. Chase has eight of them over here. What, um, and he was what, like... What's their line of sight look like for, for at them? At this point. Uh, for them? Yeah. What do they see? Because I have a whole bunch of villagers elsewhere too yeah like they up in the corner in the swamps they don't quite see them but they know that they're close because the dead animals being spotted but at this point chase was like hey hey uh it, we, they're destroying my eco uh, i need help and i was like well fuck i don't i don't quite have the soldado mass that i need yet because i'm still building up uh, I do have the Soldado production going in full swing right now. I just didn't think I had enough to uh, to take care of this mess. Um, yeah, that's that is quite a lot, and that's my housing pop too. Like, I oh, had here we to, go. Well, I like... had to chop a whole bunch of wood because I they ended up getting me down to the point where I was housed. And oh. I couldn't make a mass to fight them. So uh, here we uh, also I mean... see that the Soldados have 465 HP after their church upgrade, with only 3.4 movement speed. Yeah, to, to combat this, which I knew they were probably going to keep um, shrining up or destroying my torps, as I ended up sending as my next shipment um, copper mines so that if necessary, I could build torps around the copper mines and, uh, yeah, it's and very, be fine. Very, very smart. At this point, they were getting really close to our base, and we, I recognized that whether or not I believed my army was ready, we had to move. So I have 27 
Soldados and three Falconets because I did end up sending the Team Falconet and we both start moving our armies over there. It's basically just a heavy infantry artillery smosh pit between the two of yeah. us. <laughs> uh, go, go back, to their, right go back to their point of view because they backed off. They did. Like, well, they didn't back off. Not immediately. Kind of hanging out. Not immediately, but we, we, ended, we ended up doing a big fight and then they backed off. Uh, he has 24 Soldados. So I have more Soldados than the Mexico player, and they have higher stats at this point. Because my boom is just fully ready and done. I don't know why they didn't push. If they had pushed us, we probably would have been in trouble. I don't know, man, because we won this fight. We did. We won this fight straight up. Uh, I also have Unction in now as well. So my Soldados have 55 attack and 465 HP. Uh, and I don't even have all of my missionaries. I only have seven of them. So, uh, the Chinako army, uh, the, the Chinako mass got slaughtered. Uh, there was a small engagement up here, and it resulted in about the death of two soldados. And I don't know how many of the uh, Reuters and Skirms, but they recognize that they need to back off. a decent chunk of Skirms. Gotcha. And they're aging, too, so they're going to want to stay back and keep their mass while they age at least platypuses mm -hmm. now this, this is smart th this entire time you know we start to push forward there's, there's the houses but at all times without me needing to think or queue up units i'm continuing to mass soldados in the background that's the beauty of this strategy is the that's soldados the just keep the coming the soldados just keep coming uh they uh, i forget to move my missionaries uh uh, so these guys, but these guys have 55 attack with seven of the the missionaries and 465 HP in the third age. It is just absolutely crazy, and there is no stopping them once they get once they take off. Uh, I'm starting to train out more of the missionaries at this point. We're just burning Look houses. At the range of unction now, wow. Yeah, it's it's pretty nuts. Yeah, here we go. 57 attack now is what we're at with eight missionaries. And uh, they kind of see our army just slowly moving in. They're backing further. They're backing away further and further. Uh, I think a big part of it was they also saw the stats of my soldados. You know. I think Platt is probably, or sorry, Pete is probably aging at this point too. Uh, let's so check. So they want to. They want to keep their mass. Yes, yeah, so Platypus actually went to age four at this point, so he's he's. Uh, He's gonna want to get his guard upgrade. He's gonna want to get his guard upgrade. Everybody wants to get upgrades. their guard up Look at all the culverins and yeah, yeah. They got a whole bunch of they got a whole bunch of artillery prepping for us coming in here. Uh, he's well, also making Sweden, Sweden Carolians. It makes sense. Yeah, he's also making saltadors to try to combat the huge amount of uh, heavy infantry that they know is coming their way. They're they're preparing well for what we have, you know. Uh, yeah, they're they're smart. They're definitely smart. They knew what they were doing. Pete they just knew started. What we were doing. Pete just started aging a little bit ago. So uh, in the end of by the end of this game, both players of the enemy team. I am. How many do I have here now? I'm at 34, uh, and nine missionaries. Uh, but both players in, in this game uh, went to age four on the other team, and we both stayed in age three. Uh, we got Chinako flank coming for these Falconets on the sideline here. Also. I just want to point out the huge quality of life improvement that was being able to select more than 50 units in one. It's so nice. Time. It's so nice, dude. So I'm just trying to keep my missionaries away from the Chinakos. I'm pulling the, the soldados back a little bit. I'm down to 16. Uh, and you would think it's not looking good, but we're just still producing small armies. Uh, so really, this didn't actually impact me in that uh, that much in, with my economy because I don't need to move my settlers to other places in order to get them. And these soldados just keep coming, and they just keep coming, and they just keep coming. Uh, at this point, the Corolian mess is starting to, to, to pull a little bit, but we're at... Uh, 58 attack I mean, now. just look at look at the trading I'm doing with the writers though. Like, that's just so good. We also sent Liberation March. Now, Liberation March does not affect Soldado production at the Haciendas, uh, but it does affect the Lancers that are going to be coming up, and it also boosts our movement speed by 5% to help offset the 15% that we lost on the Soldados. The, we're going to fully make that up with the Advanced Arsenal uh, in a little bit, getting the movement speed upgrade. Right now, we're just trying to destroy... I a, do I have an arsenal? I should have a... 
at this point. See, the, um, artillery foundry up and should be pumping out leathers and falconets to supp supplement my Corollian mass. See, these skirmishers are trying their best to kite, but if the soldado stats are so high, it almost just doesn't matter. It doesn't. It literally doesn't matter. We're down to nine soldados, you think, but look, we got oh, 13 more coming in. And uh, behind the back line, we already have seven made. Oh, make that nine made. Uh, that that are ready. That that are building up another reinforcement army. Uh, we have 21 back on the front lines again. It's just this strategy is once it starts pushing, it does not stop pushing ever. And it's wonderful. Oh, ridiculous. Uh, I'm also starting to. Uh, I finally start. I'm starting to get a decent number of resources as well. Just po casually pooling two thousand of each. Uh, you know, and uh, we're going to start seeing some Lancers as well, in, in conjunction with these free Soldados. So just for reference, if you've made it to this point in the video, Cole is on 75 Vils, 23 minutes into the game with one Town Center. Yes, and I haven't been producing Villagers out of my Haciendas for about 10 minutes now. It's ridiculous. This strategy is nuts. <laughs> Uh, here's You'll 14. see the graphs at the end. They'll just, just yeah, well, we're gonna the we're gonna show you the graphs at the end. <laughs> here's 15 more soldados just on the way as as more reinforcements on top of the 19 that we already have here. Like the soldados are doing work. The so cannons doing work. Corollians okay. doing their thing. Oh yeah. Too. Now he's got a ton of artillery here. Look, look how much artillery is right here. From Pistol Feet here. Oh, those uh, are field guns, too. They are field guns. He's got ten of them. Ten upgraded falconets. He's got ten upgraded falconets. That's an impressive amount of falconets. Um, I, th I was just letting the missionaries heal the uh, the, the soldado mass between battle uh, during that little moment here. Because we also have unction with missionaries, so we can do that. And so uh, we just kind of casually charge the falconets uh, with all of our heavy infantry. Uh, so that's ten field guns. Th they're all going to die. There's no question. It's just gonna happen. I lost a lot of Corollians in that, though. I think in part because the Soldados were just in the way. Gotcha. I lost a, a, a most of my Soldados as well. Uh, but look, I got, tw I, I got like, reinforcements and boom, there's 20 Soldados. That's more than we had at the beginning of this engagement. <laughs> Are all the field guns dead now? Uh, there's, yeah, they're all dead. The last one just died. Yeah. And look, there's horse artillery. That's going down. Uh, oh, does, there's skirmisher masses near my soldados. Oh, that doesn't matter because they're upgraded with a whole bunch of upgrades that Mexico doesn't have access to. They're better. I have age three soldados, and they are better than his guard soldados for the actual Mexico player. Uh, does he have any soldados made right now? I don't think he does because they're Why all would dead. Why do that? Because they're <laughs> But they, they are stronger than actual Mexico's carded age 4 soldados at this point. Pretty much. So this is pretty much GG. Yeah, at this point, th there's only it's only a matter of time. I'm making Lancers to supplement. I got- I researched the, uh... I, I researched the Advanced Church card that gives me Halberdiers, uh, just like Chase did. And so we are legit. It, it, we're legit just playing this until they call it quits, which is not too much longer. No, this game only goes on for another, I think, two minutes. Another but two there's minutes. Nothing, there's literally nothing you can do to stop the infinite stream of oh, soldados. Oh, and look, here's 19 more soldados on the way. There's, there's <laughs> nothing you can do to stop that. Like, at, at once you get to this point, it's it's GG. It's over. There's, this there's nothing to do. Undoubtedly needs time. this undoubtedly needs to be nerfed. Undoubtedly. Yes. I also I have the advanced church card in. Now, the only upgrade I have to them right now is to their movement speed, but I do have access to the other arsenal up advanced arsenal upgrades. I just haven't researched them yet. Uh, but they are they're back to their base movement speed of 4 now. 465 health. 465 health, yep. 58 damage with 9 missionaries. I never made the 10th one. And of course, I'm fully torped at this point, pumping out cannons as fast as I can, supple supplementing the cannons with a little bit of 
meat shield Corollians. Dude, Vigilantes have a lot of damage. 27 damage on a Skirmisher, that's a lot. That's pretty good. But, yeah, the, the mass is just too... So, yeah, now, now we're up to 30 Soldados in their base, along with the 13 Halberdiers, which adds a, 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 so much siege. I've... And the Corollians and the More cannons, Lancers. And the Lancers. I shipped and, a oh, fort. Man. I shipped a fort. Oh, man. I did see it was under construction when they resigned. It didn't quite go up all the way. And look, there's 12 more Soldados just chilling in the back, ready for when I remember they exist. And I spotted I mean, this two, factory. Two and... every 13 seconds is... I mean, that it takes... Uh, the amount of time it takes to train a villager to get four Soldados. <laughs> yeah, that's that's accurate actually. Especially if I have, uh, I know I think one and, of my hot sandals has twenty. Yeah, now. they both have nineteen, I think. Yeah, they both have nineteen. So I mean, two at eleven is six in thirty-three seconds, which is a, only a little bit higher than longer than it takes to train a villager, and you have six soldados. Yeah, so um With 465 health. At this point and we've 57 attack. We've cleaned out every single H3 shipment except for five lancers that's only grayed out because I'm overpopped. Uh and this is just ridiculous. Uh the the amount of upgrades that we have gotten to our units. Uh, I I also never sense advanced frontier defenses cuz I couldn't because my outposts were never destroyed. Uh yeah, just 15 more soldados chilling in the back ready for me to remember they exist with 30 in his base. Uh, this strategy is it once it gets going is fucking ludicrous because uh, I can. It is pretty pretty impossible to stop, and and you'll see why in the post game. Yeah. Uh, so yeah let's look at that post game now. Uh, <laughs> th th this was such a funny to to to, to look at. Okay, so th this is my favorite. It's, it's, let's look at the the military unit population here. Um, so this 18, this is um, me having my Hussars and my, my three cannons or whatever. Uh, and then I finally start production on, on these dudes here right at around the, the 14 minute and 30 second arc. Uh, and of course this is flexible because I'm able to send the Minutemen and Town Militia to help push back enemies. Uh, this was right around the time that, around the 16 minute mark uh, right here uh is is when they started pushing into the uh, the torps and you can see my military population just does this vertical line essentially and it just never stops throughout the entirety of the game yeah it's nuts like and my am i red yeah my torp boom corollian mass has trouble rivaling that and it's it's really funny to look at military population, and then you look at villager counts and see that I had su a ton more because of uh, that boom that we did. And then you look you can, at all you resources can tell the gathered. Exact moment that marvelous year comes in and <laughs> yeah. the settler production starts. And then you look at resources gathered, and I'm bottom of the barrel. <laughs> it's it's so dumb. I have twenty six thousand, and I had like the highest military score of anybody throughout like. Th 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 throughout the game um yeah yeah look at this sharp unending uptick for the for the rest of the game it's just so bad it's so good but it's so bad i mean this is going to take over the ladder it is going to take over the ladder i'm sure of it and it's going to get nerfed assuming people get good enough to defend uh for for 13 minutes that you need to, to get yourself the, the people that are good enough to abuse this are good enough to defend for 13 minutes maybe Let's be honest maybe i i'm not like an expert people, on the your, ladder your but... skill and better know how to like platt knows how to defend a rush yeah if platt did this and got rushed he would be just fine and then it would be GG at 13 minutes. This click the, just th click the GG button, Alt F4, resign, 13 minutes, game over. Whether or not this strategy succeeds literally boils down to did you fall to an all-in rush? Yes, well then you lose. Did you fall did you not fall to a, a non all-in rush? Well then you win. That that's that's yeah, that's it.
Yep, because Marvelous Year kicks in and you just go Uber Settler Production. And, like, you can't kill all those settlers in a raid. They can pop in the Hacienda, too, if they need to. Mm -hmm. So I, I did mention you, yeah. I did mention this before. Uh, this was really the first big stress test this strategy has ever had uh, because I've only practiced it against pe uh, people in casual who were not the greatest in, in terms of skill level. Uh, this was the first real stress test against people who I knew uh, were, at the, were, were, were good at the game. And uh, I was shocked at the power level of the strategy. Uh, it, it curb stomped them. And they were making skirmishers and cannons. I was blown away by this. And Platypus this was... A, this is a better version of the fast fort that Madonna is trying to do. Platypus was so tilted, he ranted about the strategy in the post game for about 20 minutes after this game. Understandably so. Uh, understandably so. This is nuts. It's ridiculous. Like... You didn't realize how ridiculous it was, Cole? I did not. I had no idea. Until, until I pointed out that the post-game charts... Yes. Busy. Until that moment, I was trying to argue that this was somewhat balanced if you knew what to do against it. And then I saw there's the post-game chart. Nothing, there's nothing you can do against it. <laughs> and I saw the post-game chart, and I was like, oh. I mean, oh. that's right. You literally just right-clicked his base and ignored <laughs> skirms, ignored literally all the counters rushed headfirst into 10 field guns and came out on top granted i was there to help but still like you're yeah god i i hate that this is going to take days before it shows up on my channel <laughs> it's gonna tear me away it really oh. is because oh, I, i'm probably going to have that I, i'm gonna uh, I'm, I'm gonna post this to reddit and I'm probably going to have my very first, like, Aussie Drongo moment where I post a strategy and then it, like, shifts the meta. I'm <laughs> I, I'm going to have my first Aussie Drongo moment. Because, oh. let's be honest, my, my marine strat is good, but it wasn't, like, like USA isn't popular enough that showing people the in-depth video on how to do the marine strat is going to shift the meta. But this is nuts. Yeah, it's, you, you're probably going to have to make an in-depth video on how to do this. <laughs> I probably just so will. The devs see, just so the devs see it. And <laughs> you can... I, I, I you definitely... Can, can get properly oh. nerfed. I definitely will do an in-depth guide on this video. On this the, the, the way to nerf it is to make the Soldado... The Spanish Soldado not affected by upgrade cards. Mm -hmm. Like um, like the Arsenal and the... Um, and any upgrade cards that you send. Like... I don't that's, know because that's one way to nerf it. I, or I you guess. nerf how fast they train. Yeah, you could nerf how fast they train. That's probably the way you'll go about it because I wouldn't. I I don't think it's a good idea to just take away their ability to get upgraded by cards. I definitely think that the most fair way to balance this out is to slow down the train time, for sure. That's the most fair way to balance it out uh, because I mean, these are like the, they're liter they're they're veteran stat that they're veteran soldados that outclass mexico's guard soldados yes by a large margin uh but i also think that making like the upgrade cards just not function is kind of counterproductive to what the devs want for uh for, for strategies you know but you don't see that like in other civs like when you when you steal units yeah they shadow tech but they don't. They aren't affected by that stuff too. I don't either. Yeah, don't they think. are. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, USA. I can. Well, I mean, USA is not a great example because I don't have any upgrade cards for cavalry for USA. Um, but Mexico gets really powerful lancers uh, through the through through a similar method. Although they can only train them from forts. Uh, and uh, the, see, but that's the that's the thing is when they they train from forts, they're super slow, uh, despite how good their stats are. And that's why I think that the best way to nerf this is to nerf the train speed of the soldado. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, but this is all we wanted to show you guys. So um, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, having this video be uploaded on my channel but not published for three days is going to try to be nuts. Uh, have a great day and goodbye.